Welcome back to Alabama Soccer Stadium. We are already starting the first half of the game, and we are underway already. And it looks like North Alabama has taken an early goal lead. We're under, we're under 35 minutes to go in the first half. Move that Before halftime, soon. Super, super but they can take some time. They can possess, work it around, make UNA chase them a little bit, change that momentum. Molly Parm tripped up by Alabama's Z Labovich. Yeah, I think we're going to see a battle between those two all night long. Both of them work horses. You know, just really trying to own that middle of the pitch, be the distributors, be the disruptors. So I think it's going to be an exciting matchup to to watch play out tonight. Johnson with a long kick. Stop just shy of the box. Crimson side trying to redirect and then another foul. College football season kicks off Saturday, and we have the first game of the year on ESPN and the app. Number 10, Florida State squares off against Georgia Tech at noon Eastern from Dublin, Ireland. This is the sixth time in the last 12 years a college football game has been played in Ireland. College game day crew begins the day's coverage at 9 a.m. Eastern on ESPN and ESPNU. You ready for college football to be back? I've gotten I, soccer the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I'm ready for, I was ready for soccer. You know, I think football is going to be a different level of excitement, but I think all the Alabama fans are certainly waiting and wondering and seeing and anticipating what might happen. Week zero is here, and then week one, it'll be Alabama in that stadium, Bryant Denny Stadium. It'll be Saban Field at Bryant Denny Stadium, starting with a commemoration that will go to Coach Saban and his family the next week against South Florida. What a gorgeous night on this Alabama campus. Crimson Tide once again try to build an attack from the back. Just past needs more physical play, courtesy of Montana Merkel. Yeah, Merkel is uh, doing some work back there. Strong player, experienced player, one of the captains, big physical presence. And Neves is certainly feeling that as a freshman on the field, but she's doing a really nice job for Alabama, getting that outlet, giving that depth and that width as an option. Scorka taking her time on the throw in. Jessica Skorka, a birthday two days ago. And still dealing with the black eye as she has made her return for Alabama. Olivia Heinert, who started last match against Jacksonville State, entering off the bench for the first time, replacing Kelly Hovis. So a goal in the eighth minute mark for North Alabama, and they've been able to maintain this advantage over the last five minutes. Yeah, we certainly have a lot of soccer to play, but you know, UNA, North Alabama, a well-coached team under Chris Walker. You know, they talked a lot about executing the game plan, staying calm, playing disciplined, keeping their shape. And so far, I think they've done that. throw in coming up for Jessica Skorka. Bussy for North Alabama, not available for tonight's matchup. She's on the Mac Herman Trophy watch list, had seven goals a year ago, one of the best players in the A Sun. Yeah, and, and certainly one of their main uh, outputs of production offensively. 
you know, it's a it's a huge loss not to have that that player on the pitch. But you know, her team is rallying around her, and to get a goal early and get up on Alabama, having her on the sideline, that certainly is going to be a confidence booster for the squad. But yeah, definitely um, much anticipated to to try to watch her play, but just hasn't been in the mix. Sophie Neves. Once again, tight defense on her. Montana Merkel's been supplying that throughout the first 15 minutes. Yeah, Merkel's done a great job. If I'm Neves, I might just go down a little bit easy in that box. She's certainly getting, you know, tangled up, real physical play. And I think Neves, if she can be a little bit crafty and, and try to find a way to draw that foul, I mean, she is drawing one and two players on her every time. Robin on back to the center, just past Paul. Here's Sawan. Deflected back, and then in, Alabama's even this match at a goal apiece. And that's the response you want if you are Alabama. Wow. Was that Italia Gemelli that got on the end of that one? Perhaps, but... Rewinding at 1x time currently at... Resume the 22 minutes, 16 seconds. Punt selectable. Wait, wait, Here's Sawan. Deflected wait, 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 back. Score! We even it up! Last year for the Crimson Tide, after a year ago, had 12 goals to lead the A-10 when she played for the Dayton Flyers and came to Alabama again three goals a year ago, but now sliding back a little bit. We've also seen this before for the Crimson Tide. Reina Reyes was a prolific goal scorer, even playing from the back. Absolutely. I mean, it takes a lot of endurance and a lot of pace to be able to go up and down that pitch. But we see it with Jessica Skorka. I think Italia Gemelli has the same sort of prowess. She can cover a lot of ground really quickly. And, you know, the runs you make as a forward and a defender are very similar. They're just at very different places on the field. So I think this is great for Gemelli to, to see that she can still get up and join the attack, build some of that confidence. And we got another replay here of, and again, just such a beautiful ball in from Ramadan. It sort of gets stuck on Sawan's foot. Great effort by North Alabama to try to keep it out of the back of the net, but it's that run, that penetrating run from um, Italia, and she's able to get in there and place that ball beautifully. One single goal at the eight minute mark, Alabama responds eight minutes later to make it a one one score. And I think if you're West Hart, that's exactly what you want to see your team do. They did not panic. They sort of settled in, they pulled up their socks and said, all right, we're going to move this ball around, we're not going to panic, we're going to disrupt this momentum, and we're going to finish the ball and get a goal. Brooks Steer getting the attack from the back. Scorka trying to set up another opportunity. It was Johnson right on Sawan. And the Crimson Tide. Oh! Two to one, Alabama. You know, I think everybody was watching and waiting for that call to be uh, uh, whistled. All right, let me see what Resuming happened to Sawan. One X times. Resume the 24 minutes, 49 seconds. Puzz selectable. It, oh! It, it's right about this. It's right about this. Score! We are in the lead. Two to one. Everybody was watching and waiting for that call to be uh, whistled on Sawan. It looked like she got wow. taken down outside the box. Referees said play on. That ball snuck through and Alabama was able to capitalize. We're in the lead. We'll see another look at that here. It's two to one. Scorka, a great turn by Nedia Sawan. Beautiful. Pulls all those players in. There's no call. And then Nedia that score? We are in the lead always, always has a nose for that net she is always looking to place that ball in great finish. last year she was second first team all sec on freshman team worked her way in the starting lineup 
And our first goal of the season is Alabama's match the total it had on Saturday in the 2-1 to win against North Texas, but the final goal was until the 81st minute, the game winner by Gianna Paul that night. Sometimes it takes the entire <laughs> game and then some to, to find a winner. Sydney Opic just in this match for the Crimson Tide, replaced Kirsten McDonald. Steer moving it deep, Bly off her line, had pressure from Swan, but still smothers it. Yeah, Bly did a really nice job of coming out. I think she knows that Swan is going to run down every single ball possible. I think she's expecting the speed from Gianna Paul, the aggressiveness from Alabama in general, and so she's got to come out and own that box, own that ball, and she did it right there. Dukan with the pressure. Teams trading headers. Physical battle for Neves. We're in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. This is a very late night game under the lights. It's a very late night game. It's a beautiful night here at the Alabama Soccer Stadium in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. This is home of the Alabama Crimson Tide. Nadia Ramadan again worked her way into the starting lineup early around the start of SEC play and it led to a tremendous That's Nadia Ramadan. Four goals, but one assist as well. And yeah, she's I mean, one of my favorite players in number 10. And you can be a great player. It's just the pace of the game's different. You know, it's a little bit more physical. There's all these little things just to get used to. But, you know, Nadia is one of those players that has a really great soccer IQ, great touch on the ball, has really good vision, very crafty. And so it was just a matter of time before she sort of had all those um, you know, facets start clicking. And once they started clicking, they did not stop. And Jaren, playing time over some players that were such a key part of the previous year's SEC championship and College Cup run. Yeah, and you know, that's, you know, I think as a, a player and a teammate, when you look at new players coming in, the idea should be, wow, we are going to leave this place better than it came, than we had it when we came in. And if we can win and achieve this goal as a team, let's do it. And whoever's in that spot, you've got to be ready to support and, and be a team player. Breezy Brewer trying to keep it just in play. Going right up against Johnson as Alabama. Not only bringing in Breezy Brewer, but Cameron Silva getting her first action of the night, as well as Kennedy Garcia. Now it's Brewer getting set for the corner kick. This will be the first one for the Crimson Tide tonight, and the first one we've seen as we're almost midway through this first period. Brewer with the service. Off the head of Garcia, to the right. How does Bly respond after giving up these two goals relatively in quick fashion in, the lot, in those two minutes? You know, soccer is one of those cruel sports where it tends to happen like that. You know, that the next five minutes after a goal is scored are so important to either A, capitalize on that momentum, right, or try to disrupt it. And UNA did not do a good job of sort of stopping that, that tide of Alabama players coming through. So I think for, for Blash, you just got to kind of settle in, let it go. I mean, there's a lot of soccer to play. And unfortunately, you're the last person standing, but you're certainly not the reason it got back there either. So I think she's just got to continue to talk and command her back line. And her team has to, you know, find a way to, to continue to work and play. Cameron Silva approaching the attacking third. Nadia Ramadan, who scored the go-ahead goal for the Crimson Tide just a few moments ago. Garcia has Kukan 
Right in the center, and a top tackle. Play continues. Brewer working it back to midfield. Yeah, and sometimes you got to reset like that. You know, uh, Garcia made a great run out there, being marked by Sanaya Johnson. You know, it's going to be tough to turn her. The moment you sort of take your head off your, or take your eyes off your feet, she's going to tackle you there. And Alabama just has to reset real quick. And you can see with this tackle here, Garcia looked up just for a second, sort of took her foot off the ball, and Sonia Johnson, again, just so experienced on that back line, a real gritty player, a real smart player, and she's gonna either toe poke it, you know, do something to disrupt it, not gonna give you that turn quite easily. First power for transfer in North Alabama soccer history when she joined from Mississippi State. Very vocal on the so, back and after Florida this game, then we might going to resume watching a Florida State, State versus play for North Alabama and in this matchup tonight against Alabama versus yeah, whatever team it is. North Alabama, really, really strong addition to their back line. Kate Henderson getting some of her first minutes tonight. Crazy Brewer with space. Ready to use. Working with Silva. North Alabama interrupting the Crimson Tide attack. Lexi Vernsey. Speedy downfield. Has an option with Heinertz. Crimson Tide with clearance. Certainly, Coach Walker looking for more runs like we just saw from Vernsey. Yeah, Vernsey is a transfer that comes in. I know we talked about Alabama having new faces, but, you know, North Alabama has 12 new players, six of them freshmen. And so, again, just trying to, to work together, piece it together. They've had such a short, you know, preseason time. And so all you want to do is just find those pairings, get people comfortable playing with each other, and that just takes time. Foul on Kennedy Garcia, setting up this kick for North Alabama. Trying for a response after Alabama scored two goals between the 16th and 18th minute to take a 2-1 lead. Zaniah Johnson. High, booming kick. Headed away first by the Crimson Tide. Redirected. Just wide. Yeah, no. Not a bad look there by so, North Alabama to, to take that long shot, trying to catch Lallier off her line. I think that was Molly Parham. Smart, smart look at the net. Parham getting involved once again. You know, Coach Walker described Parham as the Energizer Bunny, just never, never stops. Just so industrious on and off the ball. Ramadan meets that cross. Crimson Tide possession. Silva with her speed. Speaking of Energizer Buzzy for the Crimson Tide, really that was Cami Silva all last year as a freshman. Yeah, the midfielders do a lot of work, and, and some of it is, is seen and sort of realized. Other times it's not, sort of working in the shadows. But, you know, more times than not, it's really that movement off the ball. What are you doing to get open? How are you directing play, communication? Very, very important. Crimson Tide take possession. There's Silva once again. Garcia and Henderson right there as well as finally a whistle comes in. Yeah, I was going to say, Garcia keeps putting herself in really, really great positions. You can see her sort of smile there a little bit. But, you know, she's got great speed. She's very physical. She's making the right runs where she's bringing that player in. She's taking very good penetrating touches, putting herself between the ball and the player and, and drawing some really good fouls in and around that 18-yard box. Great opportunity for Alabama. The foul on Abby Thornton for North Alabama. Ramadan and Brewer both getting set up. It's Brewer. Rolls it left. And part of what you're also working out during the preseason is some of your set pieces. Who's going to take them? 
you know, and, and some of the theatrics that are involved in it, how they play off one another, um, those things take a little bit of time to develop too. But, you know, Brewer has been taking a lot of set pieces with that left in swinger. So I think we'll see her further develop um, many of those set, pe uh, set pieces throughout the season. Emmy Award winning True South presented by Yellowwood is set for its seventh season that will debut on Tuesday night at 8 Eastern on SEC Network. Season 7 will kick off in Oklahoma City, exploring the oil and cattle work that puts money in pockets and ribeyes on tables. That's True South presented by Yellowwood on Tuesday night at 8 Eastern. Getting hungry? Just thinking about that next episode <laughs> of True South. John T. Edge does a great job with his crew. It's 4.50 p.m. Another opportunity for Alabama. And it'll set up a corner. I think we saw Kate Henderson get in there, and she's notorious for lurking around in that six-yard box using that head. Let's see if Breezy Brewer can connect with that in-swinging left foot here and find the head of Henderson. Second corner kick for Alabama. Off the head of Ramadan, out of play to the right side. Crazy Brewer, younger of the Brewer sisters on the Crimson side roster this season. Callie's still working her way back from injury after not playing last year for Alabama. There's several players on Alabama's roster trying to work themselves back into, into playing time after being out all last year. minutes of the first half. Just joining us in the eighth minute, it was Hope Lensing scoring for North Alabama, and then eight minutes later, the Crimson side responded with two goals in the next two minutes by Atala Jamelli and Nadia Ramadan. 2-1 lead for the Crimson Tide. We're in the lead, 2-1. And Andy I know this Garcia game was from yesterday, and... Long range oh, range what the... Play. Brewer sisters from Riverside, California. Callie made first of her choice Callie for the Crimson and Tide. And a couple years later, wow. coming to Tuscaloosa as well. One of 40 teams, Alabama and Division One soccer with the sister duo and the first for the Crimson Tide. Wow, since they're Alexis kind of silly. That's Mouton kind of pretty interesting out there. The and... era from 2014 yeah. to 2017. Yeah, that was, that was a long time ago in that West Hart era, but... Yeah, I always think I had a sister that played at the University of Cincinnati, and I always wonder, wouldn't it have been fun if we played at the same school together? So I hope the, the Brewer sisters enjoy the time they have together. We've heard they're very close off the field, even live together here in Tuscaloosa, but on the pitch, as competitive as can be, Coach Hart has really talked about the tough tackles those two have had, and really the toughest on the team against each other. That sounds like any sister <laughs> duo that I know, Roger. Andy Garcia trying to build again for Alabama, working out to Kate Henderson. And Henderson will draw another corner. Yeah, Alabama is really, really dangerous in that final third. If they are not getting a shot on, on net, they're certainly going to punish you in the corners. So for Alabama this season, can they develop a really great set piece off that corner flag? They get themselves in dangerous territory all the time. Now Brewer shifting to the other side. Alabama with a corner kick. North Alabama met that well, especially with Olivia Heinert. Yeah, she did well to, to challenge Brooke Steer, number three for Alabama. Another great target on those set pieces. Has scored several times with her head as well. But great man marking from North Alabama to disrupt that. Maddie Reynolds trying to move into midfield.
going for the Lions, trying to build an attack. This will go right back to Alabama. Mason Smith coming on for the Crimson Tide. Freshman out of Eureka, Missouri. Taking over for Brooks Steer. Maddie Ramadan getting a rest as well as Isabel Smith comes in. Those two not related. <laughs> Isabel and Mason Smith on this Crimson Tide roster. Ball right away is Isabel Smith. Goes by the nickname Izzy. Yeah, she was a transfer in from Indiana last year. Um, you know, had a, had a good season. Mason Smith, on the other hand, freshman. And so big shoes to, to jump in the back line. I think she's been, she had started a couple of those early games, but great size, great presence. My immediate reaction seeing her was just, wow, she seems very comfortable, um, very calm and collected on that back line, which is a great sign for Alabama. Now patrols it back to Mason Smith. So the freshman connecting with the fifth-year senior, Jessica Skorka. Now Alabama with Gianna Paul getting involved again with a cross to the top of the box. Smith has that shot deflected, Isabel Smith. Skorka trying to keep possession. Paul back to the center again. Dangerous spot. It'll go out of play. That's some great service from Gianna Paul. I mean, she can really do it all, whether she's getting the ball in the middle of the pitch or whether she's giving service from that outside flank. That first one was she just found the perfect seam for Izzy Smith, unable to finish there, and then she lofted a great ball to Garcia, a little bit out of her reach there, but um, some really good looks from Gianna Paul and that service from that right flank. And that's what Wes Hart wants to see because it's not all about goals for Jenna Paul. There's so many other ways she can impact for Alabama. Yeah, and you know, for any competitive player, especially someone like Gianna Paul, who's been notorious for just, you know, punishing goalkeepers, you want to feel like you're contributing in the way that you know best how, and, and that's by scoring goals. But, I mean, as you mentioned, there's just so much to do. And Gianna Paul attracts so much attention. She's got so much skill. She's just got to continue to, to sit in there and, and, you know, take advantage of whatever role she can play that night. John and Paul getting involved again. On Alabama with eight goals a year ago. Isabel Smith in the center. Finding Silva, just out of play. Corner. Or Gianna Paul, the game winner last time out against North Texas. Obviously burst on the scene as a freshman, being the SEC Freshman of the Year. No surprise, she's on the SEC watch list this year. Yeah, I mean, Gianna Paul making the, the Matt Kerman Trophy watch list. The United That's Soccer Gianna Matches Paul. What well, well, one of the players? I mean, it goes on and on, and very deserving of those. Um, and so you're just watching this this phenom sort of explode onto the scene this is a long game here at the alabama so soccer stadium in tuscaloosa uh, alabama i know this is from yesterday's game but i didn't get a chance to catch up with him oh so close to get another goal man wow wow Wow. We was right there at the angle, but it just went off the post. But just, you know, just before that, Roger, I was going to say, Alabama's moving the ball really, really well. They're going I wouldn't believe what I saw. They're switching the ball with pace. They're using some of that combination play in the middle. They're really making it difficult for North Alabama to, to mark them and, and to predict where those passes are going. See if the Lions can build from the back. Trailing Alabama by a goal. Final seven minutes of the first period. 
for North Alabama, it's going to be important for them to keep this score where it is. Keep it with that 2-1. If they can tie it up, great, but maintain that. It will be tough for them if they, they drop another one going into the halftime. For Alabama, you want to get another one before half if you can. Gianna Paul to the center. Met first. Here's Meyer. Another opportunity. Come on. We have another opportunity before. And we just like... Met well by North Alabama. The takeaway by Tyrell. Well, we gotta see what the team mascot is for North Alabama, cause we got South Alabama, North Alabama, and also have the University of Alabama. We got three Alabama campuses. Oh! Top tackle and a foul. Cameron Silva slow to get up for the Crimson Tide. Yellow card issued to North Alabama. Yellow card for uh, North Alabama. Oh my god, yellow card by Molly Parham, number nine, who gets a yellow card? But you, you've got to sort of draw the line in the sand somewhere. I think that was a, a late tackle, maybe a little bit of fatigue playing in, but um, nonetheless, that's where that's where the line is going to be drawn. All right. Between two very similar players, Molly Parham as well as... And Cameron that's why the play is stopped. The Crimson Tide will try and take advantage on this kick. It looks like we have a free kick. That is a good sign with that, but I think. Here we go. This Get it? Right. Oh, not accuracy enough. A moment ago, there was a great touch from Kennedy Garcia, who's had a knack for really assisting some incredible goals. Saw that over the summer in the CONCACAF. As we see this just a moment ago on this nice touch you liked such a moment ago to Lexi Meyer. Yeah, Garcia's got some great penetrating passes, and we see almost the exact same play where she assisted the game-winning goal for Puerto Rico versus Panama. I mean, I think that's Kennedy Garcia's bread and butter, able to dart inside and then just slice that ball through, finding the foot of her teammate. What... What an amazing experience just, you know, playing and competing, but then also being able to assist that game-winning goal. Great work in CONCACAF for Puerto Rico, helping to that 2-1 to one win against Panama. Could see a lot of that this year for the Crimson Tide with Garcia. You know, I hope we do. Uh, Garcia, again, you know, comes off the bench, gives really, really good minutes, doesn't try to do too much outside of her scope, but, I mean, in and around that 18-yard box, she's just got some really dynamic movement and great little tricky passes off that outside of the foot. Final five minutes of this first half. Crimson Tide hoping to build an advantage. North Alabama trying to keep it right where it is. A one goal match. You know, for all intents and purposes, you know, North Alabama, I think, is staying very disciplined. Um, you know, they went up early. I don't think they expected that, but they definitely took advantage of um, Alabama's weak spot, put a great goal in. Unfortunately, gave two up uh, quickly, but since then, they've sort of settled back in. They're trying to keep their shape, be disciplined, pick their times to go forward. We're around to the right to Karis Hall, just into the match. Tricky in the box, just behind Meyer. And really, it's North Alabama's back line that has done so much to keep them in this game. Great seniors back there, really strong physical players that are, are making it difficult for Alabama to to finish in that final third. Abigail Witten starting this attack with a takeaway and then kept possession for so long against Breezy Brewer. And like we said earlier, North Alabama has six freshmen that they've welcomed uh, to the campus this year, Witten being one of them, and that's you know a great run on her part getting deep into that final third. Her dad, Jeremy Witten, played baseball and football at LSU. Her mom, Jennifer, was a cheerleader there. Yes, football. He was a kicker and punter for the Tigers. Then won three national championships in baseball, playing for the legendary Skip Bertman. She's got some good genes there, it sounds like. Stays with purple. There you go. play for North Alabama. Keep it in the family. <laughs> corner kick coming up for North Alabama. This will be the first of the match for a team that likes corner kicks. Led a son in corner kicks a year ago. Met immediately by the Crimson Tide's Kate Henderson. 
Off the head and just out to the right. A good look for Montana Merkel. Yeah, that was uh, not the best clearance for Alabama. And, you know, North Alabama did a nice job of just redirecting, putting that ball back in. Alabama's all rushing up, and Merkel tried to get on the end of that. She's got great size and just a little bit wide. And we're under two minutes well, to yeah. go in the first half. Wow, look at look at beautiful at nighttime in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And we're gonna we all got under three minutes to go in the first half. We're under two minutes to go in the first half. Let's see if we can make something interesting happened and speaking of Alabama the Alabama football team will have a rematch from last year's SEC championship game and it will be and it will have a matchup on September 28th Shots to three for Coming at seven. It might be a good game. Let's see if we can make something happen. And we're under a minute ago in the final few seconds left in the first half before I have and today we have soccer fans who are here to watch and to support the game Keep it near the back for the final seconds of this first half. And that will do it for the first half, and we are in the lead a two to one so far. Now let's uh wow. the crimson side after Several minutes of still trying to gain possession. Eventually finding the back of the net to take a two to one lead here in Tuscaloosa. Roger Hoover, Haley McDonald from the booth, now joined on the pitch by Alabama head coach Wes Hart. And coach, what did you like about the response from your team after North Alabama scored the game's first goal in the eighth minute? Yeah, certainly a, a good response, getting a couple goals back, but uh, but not pleased with the half as a whole uh, in general. You know, I thought it was uh, a little bit uh, a little bit boring. Um, you know, obviously, they uh, they put a lot of numbers behind the ball. Wes Hart, this is our head course, coach. But, uh, we, uh, for our women's we soccer to, to game. We kind of run out of ideas and, and uh, kind of lack movement and activity. And so this next half, if we want to break them down, I think we, we need a, a bit more movement off the ball. Coach, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks. That's Wes Hart, the head coach of the Alabama Crimson Tide. His team, again, with that 2-1 to one advantage, again, trying to spice it up, maybe coming up in the second half. But we saw some goals scored in this first half. Hope Lensing first for North Alabama. And now it's half time left. Catch our uh, breather and uh, see we're going to have a good halftime break. And yeah.